Welcome everyone, Simon here from the Wales of Wall Street. We have an IOTA video for you guys today. IOT on the exchange. Um, we haven't covered IOTA actually for a few weeks now. I think it's about a month ago. Uh, in fact, we had two particular topics last month. One around the uh, Data Act going through Europe right now and IOTA's position through that, especially with their involvement with the European Blockchain Association as well. And we've got here as well the four key changes from IOTA, uh, looking at 2.0 infrastructure they're putting into place at that time. Uh, but today, guys, I just wanted to have a quick pinpoint discussion around artificial intelligence and the integration of blockchain. Both of these technologies are in advanced stages of development. Of course, AI is something that has been on everyone's lips the last year or so. Uh, in particular, uh, there's a huge rush towards artificial intelligence related technologies and certainly from an investment perspective, this is becoming an exciting area to delve your money into. Um, and of course, blockchain has been around for some time as well, as has artificial intelligence, to be honest. I think they go hand in hand in both the kind of longevity of which both these areas of interest have you know, formulated themselves over the years. And particularly more recently, we look at the excitement of these two coming together in association as well with the Internet of Things. Now, these three pillars um, have very, very significant arms to themselves, respectively. Uh, fortunately, personally, I've worked within the artificial intelligence space as well as the Internet of Things IoT space as well. And I think I've very much said along the lines many, many times in many videos about how important all of these coming together uh, will be for the world, both from an economic perspective, the speed at which we process payments and development of things as well, and just how things will talk to each other. And I don't just mean uh, communication you know, by word of mouth. I'm talking about the communication within finance uh, of a messaging service. I'm talking about the, the communication between a product or a device or a machine talking to another or bypassing a certain uh, pathway of action uh, based on technology that's integrating these three together as well. And in fact, I'll leave a link to some of these articles. It's really fascinating. IBM is, of course, a great example as they have their own technology within blockchain, and particularly the fact that these guys are very much associated on the governing council of Hedera Hashgraph, for example, another project that we talk about a lot on the channel, uh, but bringing artificial intelligence and blockchain together. Um, and I think this is a great article, actually, because it gives a bit of a uh, basic overview of what blockchain is, what AI is, and then bringing those formulations of interest together in terms of the different sectors it can cover and the different solution aspects that it can provide as well. And it's these kind of areas that we're going to be talking about in a bit more detail. Uh, so for me, IOTA... Um, when I first heard about it, um, it, it really struck a chord with me in my mind. First of all, as I said, with my AI background and IoT background as well, I understood those two areas very interestingly. And in fact, ever since I was a kid, and it sounds a bit random, but I was always fascinated by nanotechnology and artificial intelligence and the, the essential the role, not just the robotics, but AI in general. I knew this was coming you know, way into the future. I think a lot of people did through films and stuff anyway. If you can remember those uh, old films with like Jude Law and um, um, Artificial Intelligence, um, you know, the name says it all. Uh, but that was more about like um, main focus on like humanoids and things. But actually there was a lot going on in the background about how data was passed around, how people communicated um, and how information could be gathered and um, definitely something that we could uh, cherry pick as and when we could or wanted to and have that extreme amount of historic data within the protocol of AI. Of course, those are very visionary films and perhaps no understanding at that time how we could see this all actually working. And we're getting into a really interesting time, guys. Some people are against it, some people are for it. And I think that depends on if you're an investor or if you're in a working environment that could potentially be um, skewed in the next few years based on the fact that robotics could take over your job or an AI application could as well. So I'm totally in the camp of on the fence in the sense that I see benefits and pros and cons, if you like, for a better wording, uh, for both sides. Um, and when I came across IOTA, I was really fascinated that it incorporated all of these things together, three of my very interested passions in my mind in one company. And 
more importantly was when I was learning about blockchain a few years back when I did the deployment in blockchain cryptography I was learning about how certainly the basic aspects of how blockchain was working I'm, I'm not a coder or anything but I understood the application and, and how it works how you know mining etc Merkle trees so on and so forth I get it the validation the processing factors whatever but when I started learning what IOTA was and then it was using direct to cyclic graph it got me even more fascinated because I knew the smart grid sector the IOT sector of how uh, devices particularly connected to the internet hence the internet of things um, come together how they can talk to each other so for example uh, we started seeing things like geolocation so if you got nearer to your house the lights could come on automatically uh, heating and specific rooms would come on based on where you are in the house based on sensors and things like this and security cameras coming on and security cameras picking up motion that then turn lights on so there's all these factors going on already for many years but then from a, a global scale, a data spectrum, you needed additional things on top of this to validate, to confirm things, to process things. And that doesn't just go from within our consumer remit of, you know, in the house of all these these things working together, etc. It started to accommodate in my head about, okay, the utilization of all those things, including 5G, by the way, guys, 4G and 5G, very imperative to the, uh, the advancement of all this as well. We'll come to that in a second. But it was this aspect of, okay, IOTA has this ability to take data, to take action or a, a transfer of an action, hence the transaction mentality here being very important terminology here. Transfer, transactions per second, as I said in many videos, if you're new to the channel, hopefully this is new to you, transactions per second aren't just always orientated around financial transactions. We're talking about everything and anything that can acquire an action a motion of a transfer of information or an activity itself hence the word transaction comes together as an overall word and we know that iota can essentially boast feeless transactions okay there is a very 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 minimalistic cost uh, to the point where it doesn't even need to be really m measured that it's that low uh, to accommodate all this and when we think about it in the grand scale of things like ibm have mentioned here for example about healthcare or supply chain uh, I've talked about agriculture in the past, really nitty gritty detail of anything and everything. Uh, whether that's you clicking a button, whether it's a drone delivering something or harvesting something based on algorithmic data of weather, uh, the positioning of soil, the sun that will be here tomorrow. All of these things formulate an action and the transfer of an action, transfer of information. And that's why we need the simultaneous capabilities of blockchain to validate and process things in a quick manner and artificial intelligence to put that data algorithm and data layer on top of that and then the internet of things being the module of this the machinery the software the hardware that accommodates all these things together and potentially 5g even more so on top as the cherry for the connectivity aspect the wireless connectivity aspect hence why we've got starlink up there in the sky and many other network systems going on in space and the 5g network continues to increase as will 6g and 7g to follow in the coming five to ten years respectively so this becomes really exciting now i've pulled out two or three diagrams here and i thought this is actually very interesting um ai obviously very heavily related to data right now, data can come in so many different fact factors and features and variables. There's loads of very interesting prime examples of healthcare. So we've already got historic data from here in the UK, for example, NHS records dating back you know, maybe 100 years, potentially. Um, a lot of that hasn't been digitalized and it is now being digitalized. In fact, if you go to most hospitals now, they've got rid of all the paper mechanisms and they just scan you in with barcodes and QR codes and things. And they can they can upload real time data about you know, your health and your real time health. But also on top of that, you can start managing the potential health risks that you might have in the future based on genetic information and other areas of you know medical interests um and i think as this data builds i, I think <laughs> i never really had a full representation in my mind of like how significant data actually is and you know what what more importantly what do you do with the data and how do you formulate this data and a lot of that 
you, know, you can imagine how many charts have been done manually through PowerPoint presentations and Excel sheets and things when actually all this data can just be computed automatically uh, with the utilization of the software or the hardware that we're using, whether it be in the medical format um, and then trans translating that into data algorithm AI, AI um, artificial intelligence from, from global data uh, and historic data of both humans and scientific technological advancements and things like this and then blockchain validating processing creating those transactions can really accelerate things significantly um, and I haven't really put this chart on here so much just to speak about particularly healthcare or anything like this or trying to dictate or maybe predict future things or predict the outcome of something based on backgrounds, based on all these random things that are mentioned here. I mean, this here, for example, is just basically associating um, how these things can coordinate with each other and not necessarily just go through a linear path. Um, what I mean by this is if we look here, we can see this whole line going through the middle. That actually direct to cyclic graph means we can avoid certain areas if we need to because we've the blockchain's already process validated them so quickly that we can actually just bypass those and go to the area that we want of interest or even reverse that in a backward format to find the information that we need um, and there's some really significant diagrams here this is probably one of my favorite ones because it's a great representation of how direct to psychic graph can really work um, simultaneously and I'm not really interested about the actual content within this diagram as such. It's more about showing that linear pattern that actually you can go from a pathway of A to Z or you can go in a multitude of different directions. And I always try and, uh, if you can visualize, like close your eyes and think of a spider web, minus the spider because I hate spiders, but you can envision the spider web, but then make that 3D, but then make it 4D, make it four dimensional so that you can travel through it and spin it around and go through one point of destination of the edge of the web or through the middle and different conjunctions and, and junctions of the spider webs branching out uh, in loads of different ways. And you can incorporate that philosophy in the way that machine, AI, technology, blockchain and Internet of Things can really work together. Um, I'm just throwing very basic, simplistic things out here right now. But if you can imagine, uh, you know, whether it's properties or anything that have security cameras or it's something to do with the uh, the seeding or harvesting of, of, of produce and that there's so many variables outside of that in terms of supply and demand and what are we taking in and out of our fridges, how are we buying and selling those, how are we, you know, maybe we're scanning things as they come out of the fridge and then it's telling the system that we need to replace that but then because everyone's doing it all the time simultaneously worldwide, the algorithm of, of processing and validating that with blockchain transacting that with artificial intelligence data algorithm can then tell the supply chain areas right at the, the source of things and the harvesting of things how much we need to to grow and it could dictate and change over years based on ai data from historic data but also real-time data and real-time data is significantly important right now and uh, there will be some videos coming out this week that I, I i've put together from me attending the tfdi event uh, the trade finance event where we talk about real-time data and artificial intelligence corporation that and blockchain of course as well um, and so there's so many so many areas of interest that this really really delves into here is another version of, of, of what this could potentially look like and if you've got a giant infrastructure um, you know, I, I've been talking about the, the small areas I mean you could think about a large gigantic spectrum of you know some of these could be internet of thing devices like smart meters it could be dictating to you like your supply and demand of energy it can be the agricultural perspective it can be healthcare it can be transportation it could be you know, wireless charging simultaneously of cars that are driving through streets that have wireless charging portals as we go into the near future. All of these things talking to each other simultaneously. The framework and the infrastructure is gigantic, but actually majority is already built. And that's the crazy mental thing um, in the sense that from the reality of it, that everything's ready, pretty much ready. It's just that we don't have a full use for it yet. And to do that, you need to build the infrastructures. You need to build the systems. You need to have essentially a problem. And sometimes people create a solution 
then they create a problem, then they put their solution and everyone makes money. There's many, many examples of that, especially over the last few years of how that psychological aspect works. Uh, but the point being is that there are companies like IOTA out there that are way ahead of the game in terms of the technological ability. Um, and one other thing that quickly that excites me is the identity perspective. So when we actually could apply this to things like uh, NFT modules, uh, housing, property markets, deeds, know your customer, uh, I, digital identities in terms of the actual labeling of manufactured products or produce that are going through supply chain and logistic methods, uh, DIDs in terms of you and I potentially walking up to a driverless car in the near future, biometric identity has already processed, validated us, everything. And then AI takes us on our journey because it knows the directions we need to go because it knows our calendar from this morning of a meeting that I've got at 1 p.m. And the calendar's already worked it out for me. It knows where to go. It knows what speeds because it's working with all the other artificial intelligence powered driverless cars on the motorway. And they're all driving at the same speeds and algorithms. Uh, based on that data, based on the speed at which it needs to talk to each other, hence the 5G communication, the IoT, the blockchain, the AI. Guys, this is so mind-blowing. It's unbelievable, exciting um, for sure as, as time goes by. There's huge arms to IOTA, uh, but it was that principle of artificial intelligence that was really exciting to me. And I've said there's other projects that we cover a lot. Uh, the likes of Hedera use DAG protocol as well. Uh, but that's kind of like the best formula in my mind of how to roughly explain direct cyclic graph. It's not a linear process. It's not like a one path process. It can go in any direction it wants. It can bypass failures. Uh, so, for example, your whole house eventually with the full connectivity aspect that it can entail is that if something fails, it can bypass that and get that data and information elsewhere by going through the other IoT uh, products that you might have within your household or in your, your business premises. And it's absolutely staggering opportunity here for advancement in so many things. Um, and a great example where unfortunately here at home we have some you know medical issues going on at the moment um it's crazy how different hospitals don't talk to each other or the systems that they use don't allow that it is improving for sure but when we look at digital identities or indeed medical records and things like this it's it's so fra it's it's fractured um excuse the pun for a hospital term but it's these kind of things where you sit there and go, wow, okay, imagine the data, the algorithm research. Yeah, we've got all these research companies out there, but have we seen much advancement in the last 20, 30 years? And when actually we could apply artificial intelligence and blockchain for validation and things like this and things to look out for. AI can pick out things that we can't see because of data. And when we look at this particular chart here, well, actually, maybe there's some areas of interest here that determine why certain diseases or things happen at certain times. And what are we doing if I've got a nutritional uh, chip on my arm and it's saying to me, Simon, you're going to have a heart attack in a week. Uh, based on the things that you've been eating over the last 10 years or whatever, stand still, pills are being delivered by drone, hence a transaction, AI, blah, blah, blah. But in a medical sense, um, this could be something that is given to us as a Bible when we're born, essentially, to say, actually, based on your historic genetic details and all the things that we got from the data of the chip that's in your arm right now over the next five, 10 years, we can determine anything and everything that you need to know for the rest of your life and what you should and shouldn't be eating. And there's loads of IoT appliance applications. I've seen, I can't remember what it's called, like Whoop or something. There's, there's a couple of others. Um, some are even being integrated with like Fitbit and things. This is all data, guys. Yeah, <laughs> these aren't just fun things that tell you your your heart rate and these these things that people get excited about. This is data gathering. It's the same as Twitter or X now. It is a minefield of data gathering. It's recognizing everyone's behavioral patterns how people get argumentative, all of this kind of stuff. So eventually, and this sounds a bit crazy, but we go back to the IoT sphere of these whole diagrams. And imagine a threat level. Uh, someone is getting angry in the street. What's their what's the probability that they might go and do something stupid based on the historic data or the algorithm of their thermal aspect of the heat and what are they wearing in that day um, so we can identify them and track them all of this stuff guys is crazy and when we have the implementation very soon of central bank digital currencies the potential to shut off money uh, potentially uh, locate and shut down certain people whatever it might be 
um, these all accumulate to this big pattern. So when we accumulate all of these different factors that are a applicable to direct to cyclic graph and the technologies behind them, it becomes very interesting indeed. And I highly commend or recommend, sorry, to look through uh, the different areas of interest that I owe to cover. Uh, and, and, and again, referring that to other applications like IBM talk about here, there's there's so many partners like of Hedera, for example, in their governance list that are heavily involved in artificial intelligence and other means, uh, particularly in the energy sector now in real estate, it's all coming together. And this is why I find it so fascinating. This, this is probably... Um, I, I think I've openly said this. I think IOTA is probably my favorite project of all the ones I hold. Of all the ones I hold, because probably the one I understand the most, just from my backgrounds. Um, but it's it's definitely one that feels to me is like a it, it collects all the puzzles together, the pieces of the puzzle together to formulate this incredible opportunity. And uh, as I said, it's not the only thing. It's not the only thing that does this. There are many applications like Constellation, Hedera, to name two, and some other projects do utilize DAG technology and protocols. Um, and for sure, IOTA is very much in the early stages. It's still in phase 2B of the European Commission aspect of creating the frameworks for the whole entire European nations of blockchain technology and the infrastructure of this kind of like uh, approach, if you like, of protocol and framework system. And I think it's just very much on our horizon now guys the technology is here as i said the application is very much there it's just now trying to find you know the need for it the solution like what we got the solution what's the problem and you will see these problems coming in all different forms and and feelings over the next coming years in news reports media reports there'll be a problem and it'd be like oh wouldn't it be great if something came out that was going to fix this and it'd be like oh we've actually already got this and then it'll come out and then everyone be excited in the bull market and they'll be going oh what's powering this how's this working what's ai what's this what's that cbdc's how's that working um and then they'll come to projects like this and this is where i truly believe that 2025 around that area we'll see a significant bull run that has never been seen before which is pretty natural anyway as the growth pattern uh, I wouldn't even say crypto and stuff's very much in its maturity level. I think it's in its early adoptive stage still, and it's coming into that fashion of uh, becoming more uh, mass adopted, mass awareness being around it for sure. Uh, before we get to a mature market, maybe 2030 onwards, uh, when everything's really, really working. But until then, guys, we have to just remain grounded and be very excited about what's to come here. Um, as I said, there's pros and cons to this kind of whole entire area and conversation, to be honest. Um, but from an investor's perspective, I'm very excited. Um, and let's go into the price point, actually, of IOTA right now, because this is, again, another bit of a topic that people always rise to say, like, well, how come if these things are so big, why the price is so low? Well, that's kind of a good thing in the sense that, well, we are in the early adoptive stage. People are still trying to understand the technology and what's going on. Uh, so there's those are those kind of factors. Uh, for sure and i think we're we're a bit of ahead of the game if you're interested in iota and some of these kind of other platforms like hadira etc i still think it's very early despite the fact that these guys and many of the others have been around for a good five or so years maybe longer um so there's some nice patterns here of potential accumulation if you're new to iota or you're looking to try and get some positions in the near future what i would say of course is not financial advice but i would be saying just to be wary that we have had a bit of an up spike here in the last few days like the rest of the market has i'm just waiting for a bit more of a reduction in this or a bit of stability before i accumulate more and i think this 15 cent mark is a very good bite point the reason i think this is because if we look at the historic data way back here sorry to get rid of these silly ads back here in march 2020 when we had that big crash just before the lockdown announcements worldwide we had the drop down here to around about five or six cents, which is quite crazy. I would love it to come back down to that area, but I can't see it happening. We've advanced quite a lot in holding and confidence in, in the market and IOTA particularly. However, current state of play around 15, 16, if you're looking at a stable position besides that low point, 15, 16 cents is around about where it arguably was before back here in 2020 and 2019 or towards the end of 2019 respectively since then we had the big uprise of the bull markets in two waves the highest taking it all the way up to two dollars 71 can you believe it and in fact if i just quickly put in a price range chart here so from the current price point 
taking us to that previous all-time high is around 1,800, 1,800%. Now, I put this in in July. I think that we could easily get ourselves to around that $4, $4 mark uh, in the next bull run. I think that there'll be a lot more utility by 2025 or the 2024 run leading into 2025. Um, and I think uh, the utilization of it definitely and I think the awareness will kick in significantly as well and especially with that conversation around IoT, AI and blockchain coming together. I truly believe these three, maybe four pillars if we conclude the 5G aspect as well. There might even be another one that I'm forgetting but certainly those three or four pillars in my opinion are going to drive the next market and it's the accumulation of them, the partnerships, the ecosystems and more important the utility, the actual integration of these in the real world that we have in front of our eyes working with these technology pillars so if that happens uh, i was going to remove i think it's roughly uh, slightly lower because when we did this one previously it was indeed uh slightly lower than that price so if i just get it back to its current rough point roughly around here 2000 around about 2600 percent increase i mean that'd be phenomenal that would be absolutely phenomenal but even just to the previous all-time high would be fantastic in my opinion um, and it's why I've been accumulating IOTA for some time. Um, and if you have an interest in like the Shimmer protocol that they've been building as well, the layer one um, aspects to it to really, really push the boundaries of what IOTA and IOTA 2.0 particularly is capable of doing, do check out the previous videos that we've done. Very exciting times ahead for that. But as an accumulator of IOTA and long term holder, Right now, I'm just waiting for that 14 day and 28 day RSI on the bottom left here to go down slightly further, back down towards 45 and 42 respectively. But on the indicators on the right hand side of performance wise, it's not looking great. It's not looking great, but what I would say is those negative areas have diminished quite a bit um, and it's showing some stability. So as we approach the beginning of next year uh, very quickly, uh, and potentially those bull cycles coming in halfway through next year. That's my argument to say that they potentially will around that area, unless the ETFs say something else beforehand. Um, I think this is giving a great foundation for a massive push, a massive push as people get really excited. Then the marketing kicks in, the influencers kick in, you name it, the whole entire hype mechanism kicks in. But more importantly for me is the utility. And I think that the European Blockchain Association and the European Commission We'll have some significant announcements over the next six 12 months for those three or four pillars that will really build the story of why we should be investing right now in my opinion not financial advice just what i'm doing in my opinion towards what i'm doing why we should be looking at these assets now and not in the future because uh, it's a great opportunity um, and i do anticipate potential lower regions still uh, although we've passed those a few times I'm still got buy orders around this 13 and 12 cent mark respectively and I still have a crazy weird order just below 10 cents just in case there is a um, a massive crash over a, a day or two period that happens in crypto guys it happens so guys putting all of that together IOTA is very exciting to me it's a very exciting op opportunity as well from an investment perspective to get involved with getting those utility tokens of IOTA at these prices uh, for a very interesting ride ahead as the world gets ready for these massive three or four technological advancements pillars um, and I'm very excited to see how it progresses guys thanks very much for watching this one we'll see you in the next iota video take care bye bye